If you ever struggle getting caught underneath your opponent, this video is for you. And like always, I have my secret manual that goes along with the video. Just click the link in the description, put your email in, and we'll send that right to you. First thing we're gonna go over is we shoot on our opponent's leg and we find ourselves a little bit extended, okay? We'll do it with a single leg. So I'm here on a single leg, my opponent sprawls. The first thing you're gonna notice is I post my left hand. So it's important to not fall on your face when your opponent sprawls. So what I'll do when my opponent sprawls is I'll keep the leg with my right hand and post my left hand and keep as much height as possible. When I say height, this is tall, this is not height. So I'm pushing myself up and keeping as much height as possible. I don't always have to let go of the leg, but I'll let go of the leg when I feel like my face is gonna hit the mat. So I'll show you guys again. And I'm gonna have Ben kind of sprawl slowly so I can tell you at what point I would post my hand. So I'm here in a shot, go ahead and sprawl. I would keep the leg, keep the leg, keep the leg. Right about now, I feel like I'm gonna fall on my face, so my hand will post, and I'll keep this leg as tight as possible. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do as far as recovery is I'm gonna try to get myself closer to him. He wants me extended like this. He wants me like that. I want my body in a straight line. So I wanna be upright like this, or like this, or like this. I wanna be in a straight line with my body. He wants me, go ahead and sprawl, extended as much as possible. So once I'm here posted, I wanna crawl myself in. Sometimes I can knee slide. So here's an example of a knee slide. Push off my back leg and slide in. Sometimes I'll literally just crawl, 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 and get myself in this upright position. I can also knee slide with my outside leg. So I can step my outside leg out and slide in like this as well. But the general point is this. He wants to extend me. I wanna keep my head underneath my hips, my back straight. So this works on a high crotch double, it doesn't really matter what. When my opponent sprawls, post, you don't have to post unless your face is gonna hit the mat, and then you're looking to get your body in, whether you're knee sliding or crawling in. Another thing I'm gonna do, especially if I'm in the single position, is I'm gonna take my head and bring it up to his chest. Once I get here, I think it's very hard for my opponent to defend my finish. And here's the thing that's very important. If I can keep my body upright, even initially, the sprawl is not effective. Here's what I mean. Say I'm in a double leg, okay? If I can keep my body upright, go ahead and sprawl, he cannot sprawl. A person cannot sprawl unless they get your head bent over and your back bent. Because there's nothing, they're just gonna sprawl straight on top of your shoulder and you'll be able to carry the weight. So that is the first thing that you're trying to do when you're recovering a bad takedown. You're trying to close the distance. You're trying to crawl in. And then you can hit any finish you want. The first finish I normally go to is getting back to my feet and finishing the takedown. So I'll give you guys an example. Say I hit a single, my partner sprawls, so I'm here. I'm crawling in or knee sliding in, fixing my head position. I can now relock, pick the leg up to my feet, and finish my takedown on my feet. That goes the same for double high crotch. You can do other finishes too. I have other technique videos out explaining all the different finishes. But for now, they go to sprawl. I post if I need to, and I'm pushing off the foot that's up and sliding myself in and fixing my posture. Once I'm here, I always try to finish on my feet first and then do the mat finishes if the finishing on the feet doesn't work. So I'd come up, drive right through, and get the takedown. And that's the basis of recovering and finishing the takedown. The next thing we're gonna go into is what happens when you know you can't finish the takedown anymore. And I'll explain real quick what I mean by that. So if my opponent sprawls, I wanna show you the backside over here, okay? When I try to crawl in, a good wrestler is gonna post on your 
uh, leg to stop you from crawling in. It's going to post on your leg and push your head down. So there'll be a point where you can't, you can't recover and finish the shot. So at that point, we're going to have to change off to some other stuff. Before I go into recovering to my feet or just getting away, I actually want to touch on one more thing. Not only am I trying to fix my posture, I also want to make sure my shoulder positioning is very tight, very close to the leg. So here's what I mean. If I'm in a single leg, when my opponent sprawls, go ahead and sprawl a little bit, see how my shoulder is popping out here? This is horrible, and it's very hard to score there. So as I'm crowding in, I'm taking my shoulder and trying to get it behind his hamstring like this and get my arm deep. Same thing with the high crotch. Shoulder positioning is very important. If he sprawls and my shoulder starts coming out, square up a little bit, uh, circle towards my backside. Yeah, I'm here. My shoulder's out. This is not good for me. So come back. So as I'm crawling in with this high crotch, I'm making sure to keep my shoulder underneath his hip here. I can't let this shoulder come out like that. I can't let that happen. So I got to keep the shoulder in tight as I crowd my hips, get my, get my uh, back in a line so I can finish the takedown. Next thing I want to go over is when your opponent tries to do an assassin, it's a very common move that kids are trying to hit nowadays, so I want to make sure we're ready for it, okay? I'm in on the high crotch. My opponent sprawls. Now I want to fix my position, slide my knee in, get my back straight, and start finishing the high crotch. Now I'll go this way. The problem is, as I spin around his back, a lot of people, they're going to try an assassin or a chin whip, all the same thing. So they'll lock their hands together, and the more I pivot around his back, the easier it is for him to hit the assassin on me here. Okay? So hit the assassin again so you guys can understand what I'm talking about. Go on your knees real quick. That'll probably be easier. All right. I'm pivoting around in my high crotch. He locks, and he's just going to put me right to my back just like that. Now, if I feel him going to do it, I'm going to post my right hand. Super simple. So I'm here. I'm trying to finish the high crotch. He goes to try to hit it post and circle back out in front a little bit then i can go for a double okay so if you feel yourself getting assassin just post your right hand one more time i'm shooting in here i'm trying to pivot i feel myself getting assassin right hand post circle back in front and go double now we're going to be moving to recovering to um the body wizard position, okay? So if I shoot a double or a single leg, this is what I'm going to do to recover to my feet. I'm here in my single leg. My opponent's sprawling. He's pushing on my thigh, all right? And I can't score anymore. If I know I can't score anymore, I'm going to recover to a body wizard. The way I like to do that is I step my outside leg up. I knee slide my leg in. And I pivot hip to hip. As I pivot hip to hip, I try to get my head up like this. I don't want my head to be trapped underneath of them. So I get hip to hip, head comes up, and I like to come to an underhook. And either you're going to go to your feet or you can finish from here a couple different options, which I'll show in a second. So I shoot my single leg. He sprawls. I'm in a point where I can't finish anymore. I try to crawl in. It's not really working. All right, now I'm going to take the hand. I'm going to come to the back as I step up. So step one, step up, knee slide in. Now the hand's going to come up to the back as I pivot hip to hip and get out of underneath of him. All right, now I'm here. Two things will happen. Either you'll wrestle up to your feet and you can look for a leg attack and shoot again. Or you'll end up in this hip-to-hip -hip position, a little less. We'll end up in this hip-to-hip -hip position, and we have to finish our attack from here. Now, here's some options from this hip-to-hip -hip position. If we're stuck here. I can try to throw him to his back. The way I can throw him to his back, i got to get my knee in front. So here's what I mean. If I'm going to do more of like a hip toss, I can attack the wrist, but the battle is the knees. If I get my knee in front and get his wrist, I can pull him across and get a pin. But if he gets his knee in front, 
even if I grab the arm, he just pulls his arm uh, up towards my hand over here. I'm going to come to my own back. So a ba the battle a lot of time is with knee positioning here. I don't even need the arm. I can do a body lock. As long as I get my knee in front, though, my knee in front of this leg, and I kind of push it backwards, I can body lock and bring them straight over top of me. Another option I have is I can go for this body lock, and if his head goes down, I can switch to a DJ and get the pin right there. So if their head drapes down, I can hook the head over top, but don't do this if their head is up because they'll finish this way and take you down, okay? The last thing and the, actually the thing I probably would do the most is I like to drop back to a single leg. So circle this way a little bit. We're in this body wizard position. I still want to score my takedown. So my right knee is going to go behind his ankle. I'm going to scrape his ankle out and my right hand is going to start dropping back to a single leg. And I'll pick it up climb up the leg like a rope, tackle with my shoulder on the hamstring. My right knee goes above his knee, just like this. Show you guys that again. I want to show you guys that from the backside so you guys can see what it looks like. I've recovered to this body wizard position. I'm going to bring my knee here, scrape it, and then I'm going to and look at my left leg. I'll step it out to make sure I can push back. My right hand goes like this and drops down. Shoulder stays tight, post, climb up the leg, and drive through to finish. One more time with that from a different angle, so I can get you guys all the detail. We're here. My hand's posting to help pressure back into him. I'll even have my foot come up too. So I'm going to step around the heel, tweak his knee out like that, and slide down low. Get low, get low. Shoulder behind the hamstring. Now I can pick the leg up, climb up, and finish the backside finish. Again, you're either going to finish like that, or you go to recover, and you'll end up on your feet, where you can go back to a single leg, a knee pick, or anything like that. One thing you'll have to be aware of is a lat drop. So I shoot this single, he sprawls, I can't score anymore, so I step my outside leg up, knee slide in, my right hand comes to the back as I circle out. Now we start coming up to our feet. If I pressure in too hard, he can actually throw me over top that way. So I got to be careful while I'm building to my feet. All right. Now, now we're going to go to front headlock. So... If my opponent catches me in a front headlock, there's a couple different things I got to look out for. The first thing we're going to deal with is if he's in a praying mantis position. Praying mantis is when he has both of my armpits and he's draped over top. So I'm here. He has both my armpits here. If I get stuck in this position, if I can get a leg, I will. I'm not going to chase him, but if I can, you know, catch a piece of his leg, I'll build in and look to get to that body wizard position that we just showed. If not, I can try a peek out from here, okay? And here's what a peek out looks like. So he has double overhooks here. I'm gonna step one leg up. I'm gonna shoot my knee towards his foot, the opposite foot, and I'm gonna punch my elbow back to my side here. I don't wanna sit too far out because I can get put to my back. So I wanna keep my shin underneath of me here. Okay, I don't want to fall to my hip. Once I'm here, my head and chest comes up, fixing my posture. Now I can rotate on top and get the takedown. Show you guys that one again. So I'm here. Okay, I'm going to go this side this time. My leg steps up. I'm going to shoot my knee to the opposite foot. My elbow is coming all the way through to my side. My posture is upright. My hips are coming through. Now I can attack a high crotch or a double as well, or just pivot on top, right to there. So here's what it looks like if I shot. So I'm here. I go to shoot. He catches me here. I step up, shoot my knee through here, pivot on top. One more time. I'm here. 
I shoot, come right on top. All right, you guys, the mic ended up cutting out for the previous video, so I have to re-record two weeks later. We're going over the front headlock. I got my brand new shoes too, if you notice. I saw a lot of comments saying how dirty my shoes were and how nice my man Ben's shoes were, so I had to get some new shoes. All right, so my opponent has me in a front headlock. The first thing I wanna go over is you gotta face your opponent. The goal of Ben is to get behind me, all right, to score two points. So I need to be good at facing my opponent. I do that by pivoting on one knee. So I just pivot like this. Step, pivot, step, pivot. I'll switch legs and do it the opposite direction as well. So depending on which direction my opponent is spinning, my opposite leg will be up and I'll be pivoting into him. So for example, he has a front headlock here, I'll step my left leg up, because normally if he has this hand on the chin, he's gonna be circling left, and I'll pivot in. All right, pivot in. Now, he switches to the other side, all right, I'll switch my leg, and he'll start pivoting, and I'll start pivoting in. Pivoting in. If, uh, again, let's go back to the other side. If my opponent, if I have the same leg up, my opponent will probably cradle and pin me. So if I have the same leg up, He'll be able to cradle me up and get the pin. So, let go real quick. It's very important to make sure you have the opposite leg up and you're facing your opponent. Now, there are two main grips you'll deal with. One is chin and tricep, or you're locking your hands. The other one is chin and underhook. First, we're gonna deal with chin and tricep. What I wanna do is control my opponent's arm that's around my chin. So, my opponent has my chin here. I want to control this tricep. So I'm going to reach as high as I can up and pull the arm in. Once I pull the arm in, I'm going to step my opposite leg up. My ear that's underneath his armpit is going to turn and it's going to face his chest. So my back of my head is going to be facing his face just like this. All right? So I'm here. My ear goes to his chest. I start rotating into him. Once I rotate into him, I can start coming up to my feet and getting out of the position. It's very important that I don't tripod up too early. So, my opponent has a front headlock on me, and I tripod up really early, he can attack cradles, ankle picks, singles, anything he wants. So, be careful to come up to both feet early. When do I know I can stand to both feet? I know when my head is on his chest, because when my head gets to his chest, my ear specifically to his chest, it's hard for him to reach around. I'll show you guys what I mean. So if I'm over here, all right, go ahead and grab. I want you to like drop this hand through just so you guys can see. When I go here and my head gets this position here, it's very hard for him to reach around and grab my legs and help. So, now that, I, now that I have a little bit of an angle and my head is on his chest, I can go up to my tripod without being in danger of being reattacked. Now, one thing I will add, if I'm having trouble getting out of this position, I can use my right hand to post on his leg to help me get free. So if I'm here, he's got a front hand lock, I grab the tricep as high as I can, hold it in tight, I step my opposite leg up, and I start rotating on my knee and bringing my head to the chest. Rotate this way a little bit, just like this. Now, if he still has my tricep, and I'm here, I'm still having trouble getting out of this position, the hand that has my tricep will post on the opposite leg over here, not the near one, the opposite one, and I will continue to push on the leg and pull my head out of the position. Normally, what he's trying to do here is he's trying to step his leg, this leg forward and square back up with me. Okay? So I'm trying to get to the side of him. He's trying to step that left leg forward to get back on top of me. So when I post my hand on that leg, it prevents him from stepping and getting on top of my head and pulling me back to the mat. So again, let me just make sure the mic's good. Perfect. Don't want the mic thing to happen twice, right? So... I'm here in the front headlock position. 
Okay, I got the tricep as high as I can up, not here, not even the elbow, up in the tricep. I pull it in, my ear goes to the chest, I circle, circle. Now if I'm in this position, I'm still having trouble getting out, hand post, and I push off the leg, and I keep pivoting into them and pulling my head out. Now, a big mistake wrestlers will do in the front headlock position is they'll reach their arm really deep and grab your tricep. They do this because they don't want you to reach up and stop sign and grab your leg. I'll show you what I mean. So turn this way. So, oh, right here. So a lot of wrestlers are gonna make the mistake of reaching their hand in and grabbing their tricep here. They do this because a lot of times when people go to spin around, go spin around a little bit, people will stop them with their hand like this. So circle back out front. So wrestlers will do this thinking that this will stop my arm from uh, grabbing the leg. The problem is, like we said earlier, the number one defense is me controlling this tricep. So the further you reach your arm underneath, the better I can grab that tricep, control it, and circle left through my feet. And specifically, if you reach really deep like that, I can do what's called an arm drag. An arm drag is when my opposite hand reaches up to grab the tricep. So normally I have the same hand grab the tricep, and I circle out, but if the arm is deep enough, I can actually reach up with my opposite hand, grab his tricep, and drag out of position. Okay, I'll show you what that looks like. So rotate back here. He's got me in the front headlock position. So my opposite hand now is gonna reach up and grab his tricep. All right, so this hand's reaching up, grabbing his high from the tricep. I'm gonna step my left leg up. I'm gonna grab, I can grab his back, or my hand can go palm facing his leg and go to his thigh. I like grabbing the back most of the time, so I grab the back, and I pull my head free, and pull him by to the mat. Again, we'll show this angle here. So we're having trouble, or he's reaching deep. I can even pull with this hand first to reach up and grab the tricep. Now my hand is posted, I step up, I'm gonna pivot in, grab his back with my left hand, and pull him by. And that was for me my two points. So, if you like front headlocks, don't reach your arms super deep. Keep your elbow to your side and up high here. Don't reach your arm deep where they can control this arm. Now, another thing I can do if I have that tricep is a dump um, or a fireman's carry. So, I'll uh, go this side too. If I have this arm really tight, us uh, knees, Okay, so if I have this arm really tight, I can, you know, circle up and get out. I can also, if this knee is close, so in, the, in this example, his left knee, if it's close, I can take my opposite hand that doesn't have the tricep, and I can post it on his knee. My palm goes to the outside of his knee, arm straight, and I'm just going to tip him over to his hip. Once I tip him over, my hand comes in the, around the waist, I circle in, Pop my head out and get take down. Show you guys again. Uh, so let's go over here inside. So I'm underneath this front headlock position. If I have the arm tight enough, okay, up in this tricep area, and I see that the knee is close, bring the knee close, I can slide my knees in too if I need to. My hand goes out, blocks his outside of his leg, and I tip him over to his hip by pulling the tricep down and going to my forehead. But pull it over, grab the waist, circle, pop up. This also works if I grab his outside leg or more of a fireman's carry position. So everything else can happen the same way. If this leg is close, I can grab it like a single leg. See how my hand's coming to the outside? And I can do the same technique. Pull down, lift up. Get the dump. Same thing works if my right hand is in a the fireman's carry position. I can grab here. Same thing. I uh, might slide the leg down too. Uh, my hand down, my bad, because he'll post his leg out. 
So if I can get my hand in and I can bring his ankle in, it's harder for him to pose. I can get the dunk and come on top. Now we can use this together with the drag. I can dunk. If he circles out of the dunk, I can then go to a drag. So if I'm here, alright, I try to dunk but he circles out of it, then my right hand that tried to dunk can come up to the tricep, then I can step up and pull through. So I can work those two together. Dump, he circles, drag. Should I have one more time? In this angle. So I'm here, I see the knees close. I slide my hops in the end, I try to dump, he circles. Then this hand that tried to dump comes to the tricep. I step up, pull through, and get my tape down. Now, some situations you might deal with in the front headlock. One, oh, your opponent might do a DJ. A DJ is going to grab your chin and get an underhook. In this situation, what I like to do, first of all, I want to step my hops to leg up. So he's trying to drive me to my back here. I want to crunch it down and step my hops to leg up. Alright, once I've done that, two hands go to the chin hand. I peel it off. So two hands to the hand up the chin. Grab it like a baseball bat, put it on the mat. Then I take my head to the outside and I break free of that position. Show you guys that one again. My opponent has a DJ. I set my hops to leg up to resist the DJ. Slide my knee in so it's underneath my face so I don't fall over. Two hands to the chin hand, peel it off, get my head free, and get out of the positions. Now another situation that might happen is people are going to try to cradle you. If they do, your last resort is getting your head and chest up and pivoting in. So I'll show you guys what I mean. If he has a front headlock, and he gets my ankle here, and, he, and we're in this position here. My last resort here, do not step the leg up that he has. So if I step my leg up here, he's going to cradle. Instead, keep that knee down of the ankle that he has. Step my opposite leg up and bring my head up as high as I can and start pinning in here. Alright, show that again in a different angle. So if my opponent catches my ankle here, I'm in a really bad position. I step my opposite leg up, bring my head and chest up here and rotate into him to get my Now I want to show you guys how to use the front headlock to attack your opponent. Normally in the front headlock position you want to get away, but sometimes there will be opportunities to attack your opponent. You got to be very careful though. What I mean is, if you're stuck underneath in the front headlock, if I decide to shoot back in, I've got to be very careful. Because if I shoot back in and he pulls me back to the front headlock, down the mat, he, he has an opportunity to score. Know this, he's in a better position than you are. Okay? In the front headlock is worse than out of the front headlock. So when we use these next techniques, be careful of that. Make sure the position is really there. You know, make sure they're really circled with you. Alright? So, the first one is going to be a knee pick. So if I'm stuck underneath like this, and we talked about earlier posting on this leg. So I've got the tricep with my opposite hand, the tricep, and my other hand posting on the leg. What I'm going to do is I'm going to step backwards with my right leg, and I'm going to release this post. That, what that's going to do is to make his leg step. So he's trying to step into me, I'm kind of blocking, I'm going to go like this. Okay? So we're here, maybe I have my head turned a little bit, I'm going to release the post and step my right leg back to make him step. Once he does that, I'm going to re-grab the leg, and I'm going to push his elbow to his knee and drive through with the knee pick. Okay, so we saw that one again. We're stuck in this position, let's go over this way. We're stuck here, I get the tricep, I'm posting. I step away, and I release my post to get him to step. Once he steps forward, this right hand re-grabs the knee, and I push so circle this a little bit. I push this elbow to his knee here. I drive through and get my tape down. Elbow to the knee. Very similar to an elbow pass. Show you guys one more time. So, I'm stuck here, posting, grabbing the tricep. I'm gonna step back, to the drum stops, get the tape down there. Now, next position. I can pass it off into the high crotch. This one I recommend I like a little bit better because you're fully getting out of the front headlock position. 
But if I'm stuck here, what I can do, I have the tricep. I'm going to keep getting out of the position, so I'm going to clear out. But once I clear out, so I'm here, I just got my head free, just came out. Push the arm to the side and hit a high crotch. You can also hit a low single. But all I'm doing is I'm attacking right when I get out. I just got out of the front hemlock. I can attack my high crotch, run it down, all right? Or, like I said earlier, I can attack that low single. So we're underneath. I get her out. I can attack low double, cover on top. Again, I, like, I prefer this one because you're fully getting out of the front head lock. One more time. Show it for maybe this angle here. I'm stuck here. I'm clearing out of the position. Once I clear out, I'm stepping in and getting my high crotch or my low single. All Another position that will happen is as you clear out of a front headlock, some people go to an underhook. So, if you have their tricep really good here, and I'm clearing out, a lot of people go to an underhook. And what I can do from an underhook is I can hit a fireman's carry. But I have to make sure they're squared up with me here. If my opponent is at an angle here, so circled away from me, I have to like, if fireman's won't work, I'm gonna have to circle like a full 180, which is too much. I have to circle way over here. Okay? Right? So, if you're in this front headlock position, you're clearing out the underhook, you know, you gotta get a maybe circle in front of you. Then you can go to that fireman's carry. So be careful with the fireman's carry because, again, if they're not square with you, it's too big of a rotation, and they'll normally catch you back in that front headlock position. So I'll show you guys that one again. I'm in this front headlock, I'm trying to get out. He gets an underhook. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get him to circle into me first, and then I'm gonna drop the engine and pull him over. I'm gonna show you guys another move we can do escaping the front headlock. We just gotta be careful. There is a risk of getting put on your back. So say my opponent has a DJ on me. Okay, and I'm here. Now, I can circle through here, okay? Essentially a sit out. I can do a sit out and roll, the sit and roll, and then I can circle back side and forth. The problem is, if he controls my head, so he keeps that hand on the chin, I'll probably pin myself. So here's what I mean. We're in this position, and I go through here. If he can keep control of my chin, I'm just really not in a great position here. So I recommend, if you're going to hit this move, taking the hand off the chin first, and if, now you're in a position where you can hit this. So if he just has an underhook, you know, he can also have his underhook and grab my uh, armpit with the other hand. So this is a common position too, so I'm circle a little bit. So this right here is common. Armpit, underhook. Here is where we can hit this sit-out position, okay? But if they have your chin, I would be very careful to do so, okay? So I'm here, I can grab the tricep of the underhook hand, I'm just gonna take a big step up, and I'm gonna sit all the way through, and rotate around towards his head. Once I rotate towards his head, I'm gonna take my right arm out, and circle behind, and score. Show you guys that again. I guess under up this side, and under this side over here. So we're here, all right, maybe they're trying to drive me over to pin me. I sit through really hard, keep going towards the head, and then I can hustle back towards the hips to score.